Hey guys, Manny Gazelle here, back with more NFL picks. We're on week number two. Uh, last week was an interesting week. Not a whole lot of really close games. There was a few. Um, but I think week two is going to offer up some pretty unique matchups. And um, I'm not sure how I went record-wise in season one. I'm going to go back and check. Um, and I'll update you guys next week on what my overall record is. But I don't think I did too bad. Um, funny enough... I actually did predict a tie last week, but then I backed up on it. I don't remember which team it was I predicted to, t to tie. Uh, it would have been really funny if it was um, if it was the Cardinals and the Lions. I think that would have been hilarious. I could have been like the first person to ever accurately predict a tie. But uh, so here we go, week number two. Uh, Thursday night football. We have Buccaneers and at Panthers. Um, James Winston coming off a pretty bad game. Uh, I think he threw two pick sixes against the... Uh, uh, who did the Bucks play? The Niners. Yeah. They laid an egg against the Niners. Um, and then we have the Panthers coming off a close loss to the Rams. Uh, that was a pretty good game. That was one of the, that was one of the closer games last week. Um, so, do I trust Bruce Arians and James Winston or Cam Newton and Ron Rivera? Uh, I think the I think the Panthers bounce back at, at home. I think that they're too good of a team to lose back to back home games. I think there was a home game last week. I think it was in Carolina last week. So yeah, they're not gonna lose back to back home games. Um, they're gonna pull through. They're gonna do what they do. Um, I think Cam Newton is a little bit banged up, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Panthers there. Chargers at Lions. Um, <clears throat> two teams that are both coming off of overtime wins, or not overtime, not wins, but games. Uh, the Chargers won in overtime against the Colts. Uh, Jacoby Brissett surprised everyone a little bit. I I'm not saying surprised. He's a good quarterback, but he went into San Diego, not San Diego, RIP, R uh, San Diego Chargers, uh, LA Chargers, and put up a good fight. Uh, they went to overtime, but ultimately, uh, Phillip Rivers won the day. Uh, they're going to a Lions team that just tied against a team that most people kind of figured they would beat uh, in the Arizona Cardinals. Um, but Kyler Murray had a little bit up his sleeve in the fourth quarter, uh, and the third quarter, I guess. Um, surprised everyone. Had a great comeback. Uh, nearly won the game, too. Uh, just some great throws. Lair Fitzgerald being what he does. Um, but anyway, that's the, we'll get to the Cardinals later. Uh, this Lions team, I feel like they're kind of underwhelming, but they are at home, and I, I don't know if the Chargers have really got their groove yet. Uh, I don't think they really had it in week one. They're, they played fine, but the defense kind of got shredded a little bit. Um, so, I'm going to go with the Chargers here. I think the Chargers are a better team. Uh, it's just a matter of who's going to show up to play, and I'll just go with the Chargers here. 49ers at Bengals. Uh, the Bengals survived, uh, surprised everyone as well. Uh, most people had them pegged to get destroyed in Seattle, but they actually were winning the game uh, for good stretches of the game. And Andy Dalton looked really good. Uh, their new coach has their offense firing on all, on all cylinders without A.J. Green. Uh, he spread the ball around a lot. Uh, there were mistakes that were made, but they played pretty well, I think, from the footage that I saw. And uh, they're welcoming a Niners team that is coming off a big win against the Bucks, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the Bucks, no, I mean not the Bucks, the Niners. Uh, they looked pretty good. I think Jimmy G hasn't really like loosened up yet. Uh, I watched. I, I go by and I watch the highlights of these games and just kind of get a feel for how all these teams are doing. And um, so we'll see if Jimmy kind of wakes up a bit here. I'm going to go with the Bengals. I think the Bengals at home, I think they're playing kind of decent football right now. The defense played really well in Seattle. Um, and I think the offense can cut down on those mistakes and actually play pretty well. So I'm going to go with the Bengals here. Uh, next we have Vikings at Packers. Uh, one of my favorite pastimes of being an NFL fan, specifically a Vikings fan, is I like to check the power rankings every week and see where people have the Vikings. Because like I said, the Vikings are my favorite team. And I, I always laugh when people just blindly put the Packers ahead of the Vikings the past few years, even though the last six meetings between the Vikings and Packers, I think it's in favor of the Vikings. Like, you know, the last seven meetings, it's like five, one, and one. They tied once, lost once, and the Vikings have won five. The Vikings have dominated the series as of late, and I, I still think their team is better. I know people are ranking the Packers ahead, 
because they have Aaron Rodgers and their defense played well, but they played well against Mitch Trubisky, who did not have a good game. I'm not saying they're a bad defense, but I think that the NFL world will be shown that the Vikings are a better team this year. And that's not me being biased. I, I legitimately just feel like, like if you compare defenses, I'll take the Vikings defense. Um, they're a veteran group who have been together a long time. And yes, the Packers have a better quarterback. I would never argue that. But um, I think Kirk Cousins is playing as he didn't play that much. He didn't do that much last week, but I think he's a good quarterback. And I think the Vikings come away with a win here, a statement win. Uh, next, we have Seahawks at Steelers. The Steelers did not want to play the Patriots. They scored three points. They looked terrible. Uh, the offense looked lethargic. The defense got shredded by a team that didn't even have Antonio Brown yet. By the way, there's a whole fiasco going on with Antonio Brown. That should be fun for them to deal with. Um, and then the Seahawks, they're still good. Um, they came back and won, like I said, against the Bengals. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I just... They have shown to actually have a spine this season. Uh, the Steelers have not. So, um, I will not be going with the Steelers for this one. Going with the Seahawks. And here we have the game that might just be the biggest blowout of the week. We have Patriots going to the Dolphins. Uh, the Dolphins got absolutely demolished. They got obliterated uh, by... The Ravens last week. It was like forty to nothing, I think, at one point before the Dolphins even got a field goal. Um, I didn't really watch the highlights of that game because it was just a whole bunch of scoring for the Ravens and not a lot of trying for the Dolphins. Uh, I do know that there's reports that like some of the Dolphins players wanted to leave the team afterward because the Dolphins are in a serious tank mode. They, um, it's really obvious and it's really sad. I feel bad for Dolphins fans. Uh, they have no interest in winning this season. This is the this is such a this is such a mismatch. I don't think I've ever seen such a mismatch in my life. The Patriots look in Super Bowl form, and they're gonna go in there and smack around the Dolphins. I know they have trouble winning in Florida, for whatever reason. The Patriots have like one strange weakness, and it's that they always struggle at Dolphin Stadium. It's true. Like even Patriots fans will tell you they they like it's weird. But it's not going to happen this time. They're going to go in there and, and stomp. So, <clears throat> All right, we have the Saints at the Rams. Uh, this is a rematch of last year's playoff game. Uh, it's not in the Superdome. That would have been kind of cool if it was in the Superdome, but it's not. Um, and, uh, man, this should be a good game. The Saints are coming off that huge, uh, what was that, guys? 57-yard kick to win the game against the Houston Texans. That was a great Monday Night Football game, by the way. Um, and they're going to a Rams team that Todd Gurley looks pretty good. I think Todd Gurley is back to his normal state of being a really good running back. Uh, he was kind of had a weird weird year last year. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Saints. And the only reason is, I just when it comes down to it, give me Drew Brees with the game on the line over Jared Goff. I'm not saying Jared Goff's a bad quarterback. Just give me Drew Brees. Um, I, it will be interesting. I think the Saints' defense could be a little bit suspect. So if the Rams get hot in this game, that could be really bad for the Saints. Um, that don't, don't take my picks with any uh, serious weight, especially this one. Uh, I think it'll be really good. This is like probably the game of the week. Uh, Give me the Saints and a close one. Sunday Night Football, we have the Eagles at the Falcons. Uh, easy, I'm going Eagles. The Falcons against the Vikings last week laid an egg. Pun intended. Uh, they did not play well. Their defense got destroyed, and our quarterback only passed 10 times. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Either. I think their defense is just so deprived of talent. And their offense is good, but... Uh, face any significance of a good defense, and I think they might struggle because that offensive line is really bad. Um, I think the Falcons are in for a rough year. I'm sorry, Falcons fans. Uh, but who knows? They have Matt Ryan and Julio Jones still. They might turn it around, but I'm going to take the Eagles in that matchup. Cardinals at Ravens. Uh, I think everyone needs to step back and just 
realize the Dolphins are not a good team. And the Ravens could very well be a great team. And they scored a lot of points. I'm not trying to put them down for this. But I think you shouldn't put them on a pedestal quite yet. And I don't think the result of this game will show that either. Um, I I really commend what the Cardinals did with Kyler Murray to come back and tie that game last week against the, the Lions. Because their talent-wise on the team is not that great. It's probably bottom like three. But Kyler Murray is shown to be awesome. Um, and uh, this Ravens team, their defense, can get, they're probably to make his day not fun. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Ravens. I think they're the better team. I think they will win. But I don't think it'll necessarily be a blowout, oddly enough. Um, I think most people would peg this as a blowout. I don't think it will be. Uh, I think that Kyler Murray can keep it close. Um, he's definitely a really cool quarterback to watch, and I'm excited to see how he does things moving forward. But yeah, give me the Ravens there. Colts at Titans. Uh, biggest shock of the week last week was Titans going into the Browns and just whipping them. Uh most people over the offseason just expected the Browns to have a really good defense, really good offense with Oda Beckham, and uh, it just didn't happen. I think that was kind of a fluke. Week one is a lot of there's a lot of flukes that happen. It's just people getting their their feet underneath them and getting into the flow of the games. Uh, so you can't ever really gauge a team until after week two, I think, or even three. I think three by then you kind of know, but uh, so it's kind of early on still. Uh, the Colts, like I said, they, they brought the Chargers to overtime in California. Impressive. Uh, and the Titans laid a smackdown in the Brown Stadium. Hmm. I'll go with the Titans here. Uh, I think they're hyped up right now after that big win. First game in their, uh, in their home stadium. I think that they'll get the job done against Jacoby Brissett. So, yeah, uh, I don't have extreme confidence in that pick, but I think the Titans should be able to win. Uh, Texans and Jaguars. Uh, the backup quarterback, by the way, Nick Foles got injured, and he's no longer the starter for Jacksonville for the foreseeable future. Um, the guy who came in, Minshew, he came in and he completed, I think, it was like his first 20 passes or something, uh, maybe 15. I don't know if it was like a crazy number, but he played really well. Uh not good enough to come back and beat the Chiefs or anything, but he played really well. I like I like a good underdog story. And they're going to a Texans team that Deshaun Watson looked fantastic, but the problem is his line looked the opposite as, as such. Um, I think that line is going to sink their season. I know they got Jeremy Tunsil at left tackle now after the trade of the Dolphins, but they're so bad that that line, they could not protect Jacoby Brissett. Um, and the Jaguars, they had their defense kind of got shredded by the Chiefs, but they have good players on defense, and I think they have enough good players to make um, Deshaun Watson's day kind of not good. Uh, so I'm gonna go. With, here's my upset pick of the week. I'm gonna say the Jags with Minshew at quarterback go into the Texan Stadium and win the game. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but crazier things have happened, and I just don't. I that. Texans offensive line is so bad and I, I like to see Minshew step into this role as a six round or whatever it was undrafted even I'm not even sure um, and just win the game I think that'd be awesome uh, see so yeah, I'm gonna go Jaguars there as my upset pick of the week don't have any don't bet on these picks or anything these are just a fun opinion uh, next we have Cowboys at Redskins uh, Redskins uh, uh, Case Keenum played pretty well uh, at first. They were up 17-0 on the Eagles, and then um, disaster struck, and the Eagles woke up. And Like I said, week one is fluky. You can't ever tell. But the, the strange thing about the Redskins is they benched Adrian Peterson. Uh, he was healthy. He had nothing wrong with him. They benched him. Uh, so, But now their starting running back is hurt, the one they had last week, so now they have no choice but to play him. So I think that Adrian Peterson is going to go off. Uh, I think he's not happy that he was a healthy scratch last week, and I know he's 34 or whatever years old now, but I think he's going to have a big game. Big enough game to beat the Cowboys? That's a different question. Uh, I really want to pick the Redskins, but I, I can't. I think the Cowboys are really good this year. Uh, 
Dak Prescott surprised me and many other people. He played pretty well. Um, Zeke looks as great as always. The Cowboys defense looks really good. I just think they're the better team. I can't pick the Redskins in good faith here. Uh, I'd like them to win just for the sake of, I think it'd be cool like for them to bounce back because I don't think any fan base deserves to be in a situation they're in by losing like Alex Smith and, you know, just it's been a bad couple of years for them. But Cowboys go in there and I think they win it. Bills at Giants. Uh, Bills coming off of a very close win over the Jets. Uh, I think they're, I think my opinion about the Bills is they have a good defense and a good enough offense to hang in most games. Uh, I don't think they're a great team, but I also don't think the Giants are a great team. Uh, I think the Bills will go into the Giants and I, Eli, uh, retired dude. <laughs> Um, like, I think you're a great guy. Everything I've ever seen about you, you're just a gr- like a great guy. But I, I, there was there was plays during that last game where he just looked afraid to like take a hit, even like one hit. There was a there was a moment where he could have tried to run for the first down on the right the right hash on the right side of the field, and he did like a weird pump fake and like didn't run. He didn't run for the first down. He if he did run. He was like 99% sure going to get a hit, but there was also like a pretty solid chance he could have gotten the first down and he didn't take the chance. So that right there kind of shows me it's like, it's time. Just retire. Uh, I think the Bills win this game. I think they just have a little more juice, a little more mojo going to them right now. Uh, Chiefs at Raiders. Uh, The Raiders... With Antonio Brown gone, actually won their first game against the Broncos. Uh, there's a lot of energy in that stadium, too. This is at Raiders, the black hole. Uh, and it's kind of cool. I like seeing Raiders fans so resilient. I uh, Coming from a fan base that's so kind of tortured as the Vikings, I, I respect other fan bases that are resilient in the face of adversity. Um, I'm not saying losing Antonio Brown is really that much of adversity by itself. But it's just like you're dealing with all this shitstorm of news. And people just keep talking about your team in a negative way for like weeks and weeks. And then you come out and you play really well in your first game and you win. I think that's cool. Uh, But they're welcoming a Chiefs team with Patrick Mahomes. And God bless that team. That's AFC's only chance to take down the Patriots, I think, is the Chiefs. Um, Patrick Mahomes is so cool. He's He's just so fun to watch play football. Uh, I think the Chiefs win this game, but I think the Raiders keep it tight. Uh, hell, I think there could even be an upset here, but I don't. I'm not going to predict that. I'm going to say the Chiefs win. Um, the solid win. Bears at Broncos. Both teams coming off of disappointing losses. Uh, Mitch Trubisky with the Bears played pretty poorly. Uh, they only scored three points, but the defense played phenomenally. Uh, they played great. That or the Packers defense played bad. You can take that either way you want, but I'm going to go with the Bears defense played great. Um, going to the Broncos team, that the offense looked really uninspired with Joe Flacco. Um, I just I don't see a way that the Broncos can get past this Bears defense. It's not so much like, is Mitch Trubisky good enough? It's can even the Broncos score enough points against this Bears defense? I'm going to say no. I'm um, going to go with the Bears. Last game on the schedule. We have Monday Night Football. Browns at Jets. Boy, is this a sad situation. I bet the NFL, when they schedule this game, they were hoping that both teams would be 1-0. These are both two pretty tortured, uh, downtrodden uh, AFC teams that are looking for a bright future. And both and they have Sam Darnold and... Um, well, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Baker Mayfield. And both look really promising. Uh, the Browns coming off of a big blowout loss. I think they're going to bounce back hard. I think that that was a nice punch to the gut to wake them up. Just to, to tell them that they're not all that. They have to earn it. You don't just win when people say you're going to win. You know, you got to like go out and produce. And I think I think that's, that loss is going to be a wake-up call. The Jets, um, I like Sam Darnold. But I, I, think their, I think their main issue is they don't have every piece in place yet. There's they're still parts of their team that they're missing the right player. Uh, they have good players. They have, some, they, have, they have potential to win games. But 
they're just missing like a few kind of key people that really help produce. And um, I think the Browns should win this game. Uh, it sucks. Like if they both win in this one and zero, you think, oh, worst case scenario, the losers one and one, winners two and zero. But now it's like best case scenario, the winner is one and one. So unfortunately, one of these two fan bases is going to have to suffer a little bit longer, which really sucks. But so. That was my week two, not 22, two NFL picks. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, are you guys enjoying this series? Please leave your thoughts down below uh, if you like it. Uh, also, what's your favorite team? What are your picks this week? Uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying. I saw some good comments in the first, uh, first video. So, yeah, don't worry. I'll be continuing this every week. Uh, until next time, this has been Mighty Gazelle. Hoping you all have a muddy day. See you guys.